If I tell you guys something really bad, will you promise not to go out and spread it around to everybody? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Herpes. <laughs> Thank you everyone, thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for not staying home to fill out your FAFSA or do your taxes instead. Um, I've got a borderline unhealthy aversion when it comes to filling out my taxes or doing my FAFSA. I'll set aside a whole day for that stuff. And I'll clear 24 hours out of, out of my schedule just for that one thing. And it's not because it takes that long, it's just because I know I'm gonna need that time for to be angry with and sulk around and an eventual recovery. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I'll move appointments out of the way just so, because I know I'm gonna go, oh, I'll be crying then. I can't go to the dentist crying. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of comedy is a lot tougher than you think. Um, <laughs> So, but it's not even the money part that bothers me. It's the actual process of filling it out. For some reason, I just despise it so much. I know that when I'm halfway through filling it out, I'm gonna need to stop, because I'm just so mad and frustrated. And I don't usually lose my composure, but with that stuff, it churns blackness inside of me. And pretty soon I'm eating ice cream straight out of a pail. And I, I didn't have ice cream either. I drove into town and bought some. I bought some and then a bunch of other stuff that I didn't even need because I wanted it to place around my ice cream as I bought it to hide it from other people's sight. Because it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna buy a male thong or something, you surround it with socks and de laundry detergent and all this stuff, so people don't see it <laughs> because you're so embarrassed. And I always think someone's gonna like see me in line if I don't have anything else, just by myself holding strawberry swirl, and they're gonna make a deal out of it, like. Hey, is that Deland? That guy with the ice cream, is that De Yeah, it is. Hey! And... <laughs> and, uh... Okay, what was I talking about in the first place? Oh yeah, filling out for FAFSA and all that stuff. So, um... <laughs> so... The other thing about that is I'm sending that stuff into the government. So I just get this feeling like they don't care. Why? Why would they care about my $200 to the largest, most powerful entity that I know exists in the world? Why would they bother? The men's restroom at the Capitol building is worth more than I will make in my entire life. So why would they worry about me? So now I'm just filling stuff out to get it done because I'm thinking they're not gonna look at it anyways. I just wanna be done with it. And I send it off and uh, I send it off and I just picture the person who gets it is like this woman in a huge airplane hanger full of cubicles and she's just sitting up down at a desk and she gets my letter and she goes, hmm, I don't think our calculators can enter a number that low. Let me check. <laughs> Nope, $1,000 increments, moving on. That or else she'll just crumple it up and toss it over her head, and it'll land in the waste paper basket right behind her. And so, <laughs> I, uh, boy, when I don't say anything, it's funnier than, funnier than when I do say something, isn't it? And I'm sure most of you are cl considered clinically normal and never have this experience, but when I'm filling that stuff out, at some point in time, probably from sheer despair, I just get so overcome, my identity splits in two, and the logical part of me is consoling and counseling the emotional part of me, and I'm not schizophrenic, this just happens. <laughs> and. So then, in reality, what I'm doing is I'm talking to myself, like, I'm gonna get through this, Deland. 
if you, it is gonna be happier times when you get married and have kids, and you just need to get through this day. <sighs> With money though, I think that money is actually one of the harder things to get a good conception of when you're learning. And I think it goes back to when you're young and you ask your parents how much money they make, and one of two things happens. They freak out, one, or two, they just don't answer you. And my parents never told me, but I was always curious. And what I pictured in my child brain, extracting that information, was like the break-in heist scene in movies and cartoons. You know that really cliched secret mission scene where they put on a black jumpsuit and a face mask and climb up onto the roof of the museum while that song is playing? dun 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 And then they take off the vent and start crawling through air conditioning ducts. And at some point, they'll always come to a field of laser tripwires, which I've noticed this is always really poorly engineered. Because instead of just taking them all and making like a solid wall of them that is guaranteed to keep out any intruder, they're spread out, leaving s and coming from every direction, leaving spaces that are big enough for something like Oh, a human body to fit through? <laughs> and so, in my child imagination, I easily get bypassed this multi-million dollar security equipment. I just sexy my way on through. <laughs> and I'm past it, and then I come to the jewel in its case, and I cut a circular hole in the glass and stick my hand through, except in my little child brain, it's not the Hope Diamond I'm stealing, it's my dad's paycheck that I can finally see how much money they make. It was metaphorically that difficult to me. And, uh, so, and, and the other thing I never understood when I was a kid was when adults would go out to eat somewhere and they'd fight over who got to pay for the bill. That never made sense to me. Especially how intense they would be about not letting someone else pay for their meal. Like the check would come and they'd pounce on it like a bunch of rabbit dogs and a T-bone steak. And the guy who slipped away with it was like, it's fine, I, it's my treat tonight, guys. Don't worry about it. But Yes, I do expect to pay for your meal. It's no problem. Don't... Hey, Paul, put your wallet away. I got this, all right? Sit down. Put your steak knife back on your plate. It's, it's my decision. It's fine. I insist. It was ironic to me, mostly. Uh, irony is an interesting concept. <laughs> One time I had to answer a multiple choice question about Hitler by process of elimination. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was, that was a terrible joke. I'm probably going to hell. Here's the thing that I find funny about hell. It's much better the later you're born, because if your life takes place earlier in history and you go to hell, you go through more suffering than someone who died later than you just because you're in hell longer. <laughs> like, all your damnations are eternal, but your eternities start at different points. <laughs> so like, what if you got to hell and started complaining about it? There'd be like a group of veteran hell guys in the middle ages that'd be calling you a wuss and making fun of you and telling you about how much worse hell used to be back in their day. And so like, you show up and you go, man, this place sucks. And then the guy's like, hey, get a load of the new guy. Hey, quit your whining, all right? You've been here three and a half hours. Do you know what they used to do? They used to stone us while burning us. Now they just put you in a room and tickle you all day. I saw a bunch of them listening to someone run their nails down a chalkboard. This stuff's weak. Okay, here's my impression of a mime watching Jersey Shore.
Okay, the nine Washington Jersey Shore. Ready? These people are so stupid. <laughs> Alright, so a strange thing happened to me the other day. I'm almost finished. Your pain is almost done. And uh, I'm walking into this building, and I go through the entrance, and there's a guy coming right at me the opposite way, like he's leaving. And so we did that thing where you mirror each other trying to get by. But this one was different. I couldn't get around him no matter what I did. I had to, like, spit, stiff on him. I've never had to work so hard, and I finally get past the guy, and I keep walking, but something felt off. So I checked my back pocket, and he had still managed to slip an army recruitment application in there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody.